the decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. Spend the day here, get cleaned up, hit the trail again when it cools. Seems to me. They think for me it's something wet and cool. They tell wet and hot. Come get me a bath. Before you have a drink, a man of iron. Needing to get a little rust off. See you at the saloon. Hey, bounty hunter. Oh, yelling at you no better. That's just what I mean. I've seen friendlier towns, so you just take it easy. I'd be as humble as little green peas, Captain. <laughs> Morning. Hot, ain't it? <laughs> Sign our sign says bath. Fifteen. In advance. <laughs> I gotta have hot water, Anson. I got a heavy knife to boil out of me before I go home. I'll try to make it quick as I can. Tom, wait a minute. He's ahead of you. Wait a minute, Tom. I'm in a hurry. Hey, I said I'm in a hurry. Listen, you. Don't you understand? I mean to use that tub first. If your eyes were as good as your mouth, you'd see that I was here first. <laughs> have a proper name. He's called by Anson. What is it, son? Jamal David. Mr. Jamal David, why'd you do it? It's a case of uh, the holes in the tub in me. It's the fastest way to empty his gun. <laughs> now, I'm a fair man, Mr. Jamal David, and I believe every man's got his rights. But you got to understand one thing. I'm in charge around here. Any trouble? I handle it. It's my duty to maintain law and order, and that duty is sacred to me. You understand? All right, now, up on your feet, both of you. Come on. You're both under arrest. Let's move. Morning, 
Sheriff. Yes? I came to see that fellow that shot up the barber shop this morning. In the first cell. Thank you. Put your gun right here. You sure have a funny way of taking a bath. You heard? Heard, I saw. Tub with six holes in it. <laughs> That's your idea of taking it easy? I shot the tub, didn't I? <laughs> your friend seems to think this is some kind of a joke. Well, nobody got hurt, Sheriff. No, that's why they're getting away with $5 in three days. Three days? That's the penalty for violating the sanctity of the law. $5 in three days. How's your coming, Doc? You gonna be all right? Oh, uh, nothing wrong with him. Rot gut, mostly. You don't need me. Well, thanks for coming by, Doc, anyway. You can expect his father to come steaming in here in a minute. Yeah, I'm expecting him. He's just a kid. Shame on you. He didn't look so young with that gun in his hand. Oh, I guess not getting killed is worth three days. <laughs> <laughs> look, why don't you get yourself a nice room at that hotel and relax? Then when the good sheriff lets us out, we can ride on. I've repaired a report here with the mayor and an affidavit for you to sign. For what? An affidavit. Well, you can sign it for him and he can make an X underneath. You sure you can handle an X, boy? Well, I wouldn't want to upset the good sheriff, but if it's all right with you, sir, I'll sign it myself. You can read, too. Oh. Uh -huh. That's a pretty fancy rig you got out there. Nice horse, good saddle. I just want you to know this town ain't gonna be responsible for it. I'll take care of the horse, Sheriff. Relax. You don't think too much of the law, do you? I have the utmost respect for the law. I'm the law. Sir, you're the sheriff, a servant of the law. Corey, why don't you take a walk or something? Ain't enough room in here for three. Strong man, Sheriff. Man of principle. And more than just talk, if that's what you're getting at, friend. Corey, my horse ain't been fed. You misunderstand me, sir. I notice the way you work. Paperwork, strict rules. Man of your obvious quality, you're kind of wasted in this little town. You should be in some big town. Like maybe Dodge City or Abilene. Maybe even Waco. Your visit's over, friend. More rules? Get out now, or join him. Corey, it's too hot to be messing around. Take care of yourself. Yeah? Corey. It reminds me. Ninety-five dollars. I might lose it. I'll lick it on you later. Yeah? Nice mattress. In fact, this is one of the cleanest jails I ever seen. This is where I spend my time. Anyway, the law says you lock a man up. It doesn't say you gotta lock him up and felt. That's good you feel that way, Sheriff. Speaking from the other side of the bars, that is. Where'd you get a hundred dollars, boy? I earned it. <laughs> Don't you go getting smart with me, boy. How could you earn a hundred dollars? Well, if you was DeWide and Marshall at Rock and River, he'd tell you it was him giving it to me. One hundred dollars. For no reason? He must be a fine, generous man. We well, had reason right enough. We brought him a man he wanted. You are a bounty hunter. That's right. You put your finger on it, sir. Maybe you shouldn't have told me that, boy. Maybe you should have kept that to yourself. Uh, that fellow was here, a friend of yours. He a bounty hunter, too. We ride together. Told him what you want. 
And that's how you bought the fine horse and saddle, the rest of that fancy rig. Over the years, you must pay pretty well, bushwhacking wanton Ben. Mister, I don't bushwhack. All the years I've been a lawman, I've known killers I trust better than I would a bounty hunter. The killer don't say something else he don't hide behind the law. He is what he is. Whew, listen to the preacher. He is in fine form today. You know, that's the worst thing about being in here? Is there everlasting sanctimonious preaching? You hold your tongue, sonny. How much this time, preacher? I warned you. Don't call me that. Why? What are you gonna do? Preacher. Man, you want some advice? Are you kidding? My father keeps this town alive. And he owns it. Only our new sheriff here doesn't believe it yet. See, he hasn't been here long enough. I've seen more than enough of you in that time, you vicious little... Oh, go on, Giles, say it. Maybe I won't tell anyone. Maybe you won't get fired. Someday somebody's going to teach you a lesson, sonny. A lesson that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Oh, careful, Sheriff. You'll bust a gut. Respect for the law. Respect for all that's good and decent. Don't preach to me, Sheriff. You forget what I know. Oh, don't worry. I won't tell anyone. As long as we understand each other. Sheriff? Hmm? I could use some water. You think that hundred dollars would buy you a drink of water if you're thirsty? What answer would you like, Sheriff? I suppose you get more than that sometimes for bushwhacking, don't you? How much more? I mean, what's the biggest bounty you ever got? Two hundred? Three hundred dollars? Two thousand dollars. Two thousand. I gotta work over two years for two thousand dollars. But it don't come my way all the time either. Size didn't stay with me that long. I ran into a flush when I was looking at three kings. I would appreciate that water. I'm real thirsty. Hey. Hey, he dropped it. He dropped it. Oh, oh. forget it. Here, take it. Thank you. He must be pretty good, being black and a bounty hunter both. I'm still alive, if that's what you mean. You ever been to St. Louis? No. But still, you, you must have traveled wide. Been to New Orleans. Ah, oh, go on. That's the truth. Still a slave then. Had a master took me there. New Orleans. I hate this stinking town. Flies and the heat. Breeds people like him. You travel a long way. You still gonna run into some flies. Are you trying to get under my skin? <laughs> no, sir, Sheriff. I just want to pay my debt to society, then I want to go quietly on my way. You know, I don't get you. And you wouldn't let me push you before. Now you just stand there bobbing your head. I learned a long time ago. Check the odds before you fight. I don't have to check any odds with him. With anybody around here. Hey, Paul, right on the button, that's all. Come right in. Good evening, Mr. Jeremy. What started at this time? I'll tell you when we get home. What's the fine, Sheriff? No, oh, five dollars in three days. Ten dollars all right, Sheriff? I'm afraid not. I, I can't do that, Mr. Jeremy. Uh, I'd call it a favor if you'd reconsider. Sorry, sir. It's my job to uphold the law. I can appreciate that, Sheriff, but uh, being Tom's father, I'm willing to take the responsibility for his behavior. Park, we're trying to reason with that block here. Get the key and let's get out of here. As I understand it, Sheriff, it was just a little brawling. We know a boy has to blow off steam. Yes, sir. And it's my job to control that steam. The law is the law. It applies to everybody. That's an admirable point of view, Sheriff. Mr. Jeremy, you're going to do your boy nothing but harm if you let him go on thinking that the rules apply to everybody else, don't apply to him as well. 
Oh, you're taking an awful big chance, preacher. You hold your tongue. Well, he knows what I mean. Hold your tongue, don't you, Sheriff? You know, you make pretty good sense, Sheriff. Oh, well, thank you, sir. I, I try, not always, but I try. I, I've been accused of being a little rough from time to time, but... Well, maybe we ought to give the boy another chance, huh? And my friend here, too. He gets out, too. Tom, you better stay a while. Think things over. What? I guess it is time you learned the world ain't your own private range. It's a big world, Tom, and I'm not going to be around all that time. Pa! Treat him like you would anybody else, Sheriff. Yes, sir, Mr. Jeff. Pa, wait! Well, uh... You made your first and last mistake in this town, preacher. The lamps go out at 9 o'clock. You get beans twice a day. I try to get you meat for supper. Now, when you have your choice of potatoes or how many grits? <laughs> there are times, there are times when I wish I didn't feel as I do about the law. There are times when the Man in me wants to cry out, defend your good rights, defend your honor as a man. Teach them what it means to respect the law. Teach them what it means to honor. Teach them what it means to obey. What I say, what I say before, he's a preacher, born to it sure as the moon throws shadows. All the same, kid, if I was standing where you was, I'd forget who I am. Forget my pride. Well, sometimes a man's got to eat a little dirt. Well, you ain't me, are you? Well, you're a long way from being anything near me. A man's giving you warning. I see it plain. Just like a rattler does. He's got to you, black man. Did you see the way he backed down when my father came here? I'll be out of here by morning. Noon the latest. <sighs> Maybe I'll up and leave this blow fly town. Maybe to Waco. No. St. Louis for me. Clear to St. Louis. Man can do anything. Man has a chance, place like that. So fast, I, I don't know. They, 
They wanted to play some cards, you know. They said it was too hot for them to sleep. Asked me if they couldn't play a few hands of poker. So I said, all right. And then, and then well, it was just before dawn. Now, you let them. You, you put them in the same cell? Oh, sure. Well, sure, they... Well, you saw her. You were here. They got along fine together. Yes, I did see. I came to take them out. And I didn't. I turned my back. Oh, my God, my God, what have I done? Why did I? Why did I? And then, well, as I said, just before dawn, I, I heard young Tom cry out something. I couldn't understand what he was said. But I, but I ran over here. I was here in two seconds, but it, but it was too late. He was lying stretched out there on the floor. He must have hit his, his head on the bars as he fell. His arm locked up. Well, sure. Sure, when I got here, that black was still beating him up on him. You know, and I, so I laid him low in my, my gun barrel, and, and it was all I could do then. It was... I, I just hope he, that he's all right, because I'm going to see him hang. Frank, get away from him, Doc. Frank, don't. I want him, and I want him now. Sheriff. You know, Mr. Jeremy, this is the law's job, not yours. Before you kill him, it would be Christian to ask his side of it, don't you think? Who is this? Who are you? Just throw me your gun. Get over there. You're making a foolish move, mister. There are a lot of aroused people out there. What happened? I don't know. Well, you better know they're looking for a tree out there. I woke up sometime before dawn. Seen him stand on me, the sheriff. Next thing I know, I'm coming to in this cell. That boy lying dead on the floor, and I got me a split head. That sounds a bit thin. But that's what happened. I don't know nothing about no killing, punching, nothing. Unless someone else come in, he's the only one who's here. What are you talking about, boy? Are you saying I made up that story? You had reason to. Boy said something. Knew something about your past. Are you accusing me of perverting my office to commit murder? Well, huh? Will you listen to him, this, this scum, this dirty bounty hunter? The law is my life. Where are the cards? Hmm? The what? You said they were playing cards. Where are they? Cards? There were no cards. I picked them up, put them in my desk. You sure run a neat jail. Same thing I told him. Get the keys, Doctor. You're making a big mistake, mister. Doctor! It doesn't pleasure me to see your boy lying in there. And I'll tell you to your face, I had no hand in his dying. That's the truth for God. Well, I'd swear to anything if I was facing a rope. Don't believe him, Mr. Jeremy. They're nothing but dirty bounty hunters they feed on carrion. I wouldn't believe their voices if I heard them from the grave. Where's my horse? In the stable. Come on, we're all going out together. take off after us with your self-righteous blood boiling. You better take a good look at your sheriff's story. 
And if it still makes sense to you, you better take a good look at your sails. should be hunting. I left him in there. Turned away from him. No, sir, it was my responsibility. It was my guilt, not yours. Back two days. My luck holds out. And our water. Half. Less. You could have planned this better. I could have left you in jail, too. Meaning what? Meaning maybe that sheriff had it right. You can cut out any time you want to. It's a bit late for that. We gonna try it together? Looks like we're gonna have to. Then let's ride. <laughs> Across the desert. How much water have we got? Four canteens. None of them full. That's not enough. We overtake them fast enough, it will be. He's coming.
the hell do I know? The hell, I wonder what you're doing, eh? But I never said I was bright. <laughs> we gotta move. Can you stand up? Yeah. You ever been bit by a rattler? Yeah. Then you know. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna be sick. No short of dying. <laughs> Stay with him. Must have been the heat. That's my guess. What is this, a sewing circle? Ah, we got a job to do. I'll stay with him. But I want the extra water. This man is burning up. We need the water. Giles, for heaven's sake. All right. There. The whole sky was full of them. It blocked out the sun. You, you couldn't see anything because of the buzzards. There were so many buzzards. Oh, oh, you should have seen the buzzards. Oh, man. Buzzards. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, buzzards. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Take them in an hour. It's been nearly half a day. As it ever, it's an hour, half a day. We still got a job to do. down on his poor lily brain snake bit. <laughs> That's funny, Corey. I am, Lily. 
<laughs> you don't know, but, but I see it so clear. Come on, go. You know what? You never got your bed. Come on, go. <laughs> Horses are dying under us. If we turn back now, we'll be lucky to make it back to Spanish Wells alive. Halfway home's only five miles from here. There's water there. You sure? Even if we could make it, who's to say it won't be dry? Giles. Yeah. That's true enough. It does get a low this time of year. Are you cutting out on me too, Mr. Jarvey? Sheriff. We all want to see justice done just as much as you. Now, sooner or later, them two are going to get caught. But I'd like to be alive to see it. Besides, we could wire the marshal the other side. Let him form a posse. Wait for him to come off the desert. No, no, they turn south. That means they know about water at Halfway Hall. That means we got it for sure. Charles, I'm going back. Huh? You too. Let's all go back. Don't do his job, he... he ain't a man, Mr. Jeremy. No, he ain't. for you. Sure. It beats dying a thirst.
sickness for sure you kill Tom Jeremy and I'll swear to it on my dying bed listen we're halfway out of this now we just take his horse and maybe we can make it all the way on the run again good as a slave again not only myself but what I do no thank you mr. Corey I'd just as soon be dead Sure as I got loon in me, part of you is pure mule. <laughs> them horses will never make it back. We'll rest them tonight, and then we'll leave in the morning. Saddles, gentlemen. They're only Yankees. And the Yankees don't know how to die like we do. Jeremy, huh? Didn't I? <laughs> Just like I said I would. I wanted to show you. <laughs> I want to show all of them. What's me kill your son? What's he saying? Now just take it easy, Sherry. Was it me kill them? No. <laughs> they did. They was going to teach him a, a lesson. They was going to teach him how to respect. He ain't making sense. I wouldn't either out in that sun. No one's accused you, Sheriff. 
You better listen to him. Something happened in his past. Something your boy knew about. Man, he's the only one that had reason to kill him. He's a liar! It was an accident! What was an accident? The man was my prisoner. I had to kill him. He was no good. He had, had no respect. I saved him the expense of hanging. I was only trying to do my job. I was only trying to to show him to have respect and to obey the law, just as like I was trying to teach Tom to have the respect and to obey. He said so yourself, Miss Jeremy. He said so yourself. Tom needed that. He said so. through the door first. Well, I started just a week ago. Well, that's not my fault. I'll only be a minute. Now, now Corey, look here. Well, I don't want no trouble. Why don't you read yourself a gazette for a while? Gentlemen, wait a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> Sensible man. After you. Oh, no, I insist after you, thank you. 